The second you open the door of the Great Harvest Bread Company on Argonne Drive, you are immediately hit by the aroma of fresh baked bread, while your eyes are greeted by the sight of baked goods, wheat stalks, and bread. Shelves and shelves of bread. Good morning. How Good are morning. you today? I am terrific. How about you, sir? What, what are you to? baking today? What's the best? Well, you know, everybody has their own favorites, but this is really good. This is our Savannah oh, bar. It has peaches that and looks raspberries. Good. That looks good. Would you like to try a piece I of would, that? I would love some of that. All right, there you go. We also have, just came out of the oven, our Dakota bread, and that is our honey wheat bread, just like this, but mm -hmm. we fill it with sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds and sesame seeds and melons. It's a really good, crunchy bread. This is really good. That is the next thing you will likely notice, the offer of a generous sample from a smiling employee. Take it. I particularly recommend the cranberry orange scone or the pumpkin chocolate chip muffin. Well, I've just always thought it'd be kind of a fun business to, to run. I always liked going to the great harvest that used to be Kirkwood. And Judy said she did too. He and his wife, Judy, opened the Kirkwood Great Harvest Bread Company in May. The idea, however, originated years ago. After they made that initial decision to open the store, the two had a long road of work ahead. We uh, had to go to Dillon, Montana, where the franchise headquarters is, and go through what they call the Discovery Day, where they kind of size you up as owners and make sure you understand what you'd be getting into. Well, we had to go through a lot of training before we opened um, with the franchise. We spent time at the franchise office training, learning how to bake bread and sweets, and learning all about running a business and inventory control. Um, there's all sorts of red tape you got to go through from all kinds of government agencies. Then there's picking a contractor, um, signing agreements with them, and getting through all of the build-out process and all the surprises you have in an old building like this. This wasn't the end of the tasks. They still had to do all of the decorating, come up with a layout, pick out the signage, find and buy all of the equipment from the big fancy ovens down to their measuring cups, choose an opening menu, stock the ingredients, hire people, and train them. It was a huge, huge undertaking. Now that they're open, the work hasn't let up. Keeping up with the daily operations can lead to a very long day. The first person arrives at the store at 4 a.m., and the last person doesn't leave until 7 p.m. I asked Tom to run through the daily schedule. Two people come in at 4 a.m. One's a sweets baker that tries to get all of the sweets baked and ready to go by 7 when we open. The other one starts the breads, and um, that's a busy process in itself. We usually do six or seven varieties of bread a day. Three hours after it gets started, it's on the kneading table, and where we shape it into uh, whatever product, you know, rolls, loaves, half loaves. Some things we roll out and swirl. The breads don't start coming out of the oven until 9.30, where the sweets are all pretty much finished by 7 when we open. Uh, a counter person come in at 6.30 that starts to make all the coffee and get um, everything else set up and ready to go, including uh, setting out all the sweets and merchandising displays. Uh, then the kneading team comes in at 7.30 when the first doughs are ready to go, and they work until about 10.30 or 11. Three people doing that. The sandwich crew starts as somebody comes in at 10 to be prepping the meats and cheeses and vegetables for the sandwiches. And we serve sandwiches from only 11 to 2. We lock the doors at 6, and the fastest we can possibly get everything ready to all cleaned up and ready to go is about 6.30, but it's usually 7 or later before um, the day's done here. And I'm here for the good days I go home take a nap in the middle of the day. In the beginning, Tom was both the first person in and the last person out. Now he's found enough bakers that he doesn't have to arrive until 6 a.m. each morning. One of those bakers is SLU senior, Billy Bomarito. Which one are you working on now? Well, right now I'm making Great Harvest Dylan cookies. Oh, that's the best. That's the most important thing. People love these. Yeah, oh, People I love go nuts these. over these. Yeah, I, I get started on those and have a terrible time to stop. <laughs> I had my first one the other day. Because uh, I'm, I'm only here from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m., so I'm just, you know, I'm out of here before anything exciting goes on. And so, yesterday, or two days ago, we were doing all sorts of, uh, all sorts of stuff for Thanksgiving and everyone. So, I stayed late and had my first Dylan cookie, and it was the best thing I ever had. 
or I try to be done at 5.30 so that it doesn't mess up her schedule because she's got to get on the mixer right about the time that I try to be finished, but that doesn't always work. So I have 10 minutes to finish this up. So we have one big old batch, and I actually, hmm, gave myself instructions on how to split a batch properly. Um, you take eight pounds or whatever, and you put them in this cookie press, and you have to cut them up into equal pieces. And so this just allows for different eight pound measurements. Make it a nice even eight pounds. Take a bunch of this, and throw it right back in. And it'll work no matter what you put in there. Um, but we like to get eight pounds just because that's, well, that's what it says. And if they're different measurements, um, the cookies will be different sizes. So if you put, you know, six pounds of dough in this press, it'll, it'll just be little tiny thin cookies versus uh, eight pounds. Um, it'll just, they'll just be thinner and smaller. And we want our customers to have the most cookie they could ever want. Each cookie sheet is labeled before being placed on the baking tray to safeguard against mix-ups. Now that the cookies just need to bake, it's time to make the oatberry muffins and cranberry orange scones. Use an ice cream scoop. Yeah, this is a number eight scoop. Um, I think it is, that means it's one eighth of a quart, which maybe is a half a cup. Well, it is a half a cup. Um, and so we just scoop these out into level, level scoops. Just stick them right here on the pan and they puff up nice and big and they're light and airy, and you have them with a cup of coffee, and they're delicious. Billy finishes scooping the cranberry orange scones, and while they cook, preps the oatberry muffins, which use applesauce instead of oil. Now, the Savannah bars need to come out of the oven. They're in there for 85 minutes. Sorry, I'm running all over the place. Um, and we put those in for a good 85 minutes. Uh, oh, they have hair. That stops the whole machine, and that reverses it back to the shelf I want. <clears throat> and a lot of people, this is kind of like a breakfast sort of bar. We got coconut and oats and fruit and berries and all sorts of good stuff. Um, yeah, it looks really nice, and, and people love them. I think glaze on the scones here. It says to make it a glaze. I lean towards an icing, but... <laughs> The last item left to bake today is the pumpkin chocolate chip muffins. Okay, so uh, we have the pumpkin wet ingredients all mixed up over there. Now we have cinnamon and allspice and sugar and flour and a little baking soda, a little baking powder, and without fail, we have a big old cloud of cinnamon dust. Although that wasn't very big, but sometimes <laughs> it'll make you cough. We're just gonna do a couple pans of muffins here. Uh, and then get going on some pumpkin loaves. And that's it, and we leave that, we leave that one uh, open just because those don't bake very well in the middle. And so on these guys, I'm just doing uh, four scoops. So it's like four muffins worth. Um, and then I swirl the top just because if you do these scoops like this and then you don't do that, then you have like a big butt, and it doesn't, I don't know. We like to keep this a family friendly place, so. The last thing Billy has to do is check the cookies and make sure they're nice and flat rather than filled with air bubbles. And now those are your beautiful Dylan cookies and peanut butter and chocolate chip peanut butter. Great Harvest mills their own flour in-house, and before we left, Tom agreed to show me the mill and some of the intricacies of baking bread. It starts with 60-pound uh, bags of just wheat. I'll show you what that looks like. Specially selected by the Great Harvest franchise working with uh, family farmers in Montana. So this is hard red spring wheat. We also, for some other products, use um, 
golden wheat, which is similar, but it's a lighter wheat and easy substitute sometimes for white flour. So we got those two kinds, and we mill both of those. So there'll be a little flour shooting up, but that's all right. Okay. This batch of flour is done milling. There's 180 pounds of uh, flour in here. The mill heats it up when it, uh, as it grinds it. So to cool it off enough to be good for making bread, we put in some cooling tubes. It's just copper pipe that helps cool out the middle because the flour insulates itself and it'll stay hot in the middle for a long time otherwise. So that be used tomorrow. It takes about, you know, a day. We mill it a day ahead of time. First, Tom has to test the temperature of the dough to make sure it's ready and going to make good bread. Then they use a lift to raise the bowl above the table and push it out onto the kneading table. Great Harvest then uses a scale to make sure each loaf ends up the same size two pounds, five ounces. When the bread leaves the oven, however, it weighs only two pounds, two ounces. Each loaf will lose about three ounces of moisture in the baking process. Each chunk of dough is kneaded into a perfect loaf and placed in a bread pan to rise. The dough is then painted with egg whites to make, sh to make it cook better and decorated. After the bread has risen for the proper amount of time, it is placed in the oven to cook. The first breads are out of the oven every morning at 10 a.m., but it will take about 45 minutes until they are cool enough to slice. Once he'd explained the process, Tom let me step in to help. Great Harvest Bread Company uses fresh eggs, fresh yeast, and the only sweetener in their breads is honey. The Hunnick Forts love that about Great Harvest. Everything is baked fresh every day with natural ingredients. Despite the work, the Hunnick Forts love their job, the area, and the baking. According to them, it's a lot of fun, but you have to be crazy to do it. 